okay so today we are going to learn about uh, something which we have learned always in school but this is such a basic concept that we never think about it when we are using it in our day to day life but before that let us focus on this uh, particular writing by khalil gibran on children your children are not your children they are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself they come through you but not from you and though they are with you yet they belong not to you a profound thought how do you think it becomes so uh, great when we read it and we feel yes it is a profound thought it does help us to think about something think about our life think about our children think about our own self the concept of self uh, would come in it is the words that are used and in the order in which they are used and the idea expressed through it makes it very important so today we are going to see these sentences how the structure is made what are the various components of a sentence the substructure or you can say sub components of each and how it helps us to make our sentence more meaningful and complete so let us read this played evening last match we a uh, hockey did match team the win your wow what great statements so right we have not understood anything because there are some words which are put in a haphazard manner and we do not know what does it mean so it has made no sense to us right now let us rewrite it we played a hockey match last evening did your team win the match these two statements do make sense now they are the same words as we saw in the earlier statements but with a different structure so this is what we want to understand what is this structure what is it that makes a statement sensible to us such concept is known as sentence so sentence is a group of words that make a complete sense what is the nature of sentence sentence make complete sense that is the first and the most important feature of a sentence it should begin with a capital letter words need to be in proper order that is what we have to learn that what is the proper order and it can end with a full stop with a question mark with an interrogation mark or question mark or an exclamation mark so there are variety of sentences let us look at some dinosaurs lived millions of years ago we will not tolerate this humpty dumpty sat on a wall at least the last line is the one that we have been reading while we were kids and we still uh, see it in the rhyming books so these are called as declarative or assertive sentences now why we call such statements as declarative the word itself or assertive the word itself is very self explanatory declaring something or asserting on some fact or even opinion but you assert on it and therefore the sentence becomes assertive or declarative so the sentence that makes a statement or an assertion is the simplest definition of this type of sentence and it should end with a full stop it should end with only a full stop that is more important now let us look at some more always remember what i told you have mercy upon us be quiet now these kind of sentences are not declarative they are imperative what is the difference if you look at it the first one is declaring something asserting something whereas the second statement it looks like declaration or assertion but there is some amount of command or request so such kind of statement we will called as imperative statement a statement or a sentence that expresses a command or an entreaty or a request okay now what is your name 
what is in the name as shakespeare had said but over here we are asking you what is your name so a question mark who will guard the guards again this is a question taken from some novel do you like mangoes simple question these are the sentences which will be called as interrogative sentence interrogate means to question so from there we get these interrogative sentences also one more feature of interrogative sentence we will see one is that it asks a question and the question is with either an auxiliary like do can would etc or it could be a question that starts with a w like what who who when where why and very important it should end with a question mark if you want if you intend to write an interrogative sentence and you do not use a question mark then your sentence is wrong in the concept next type let us see oh so cute isn't this fun what a piece of beauty is earth exclamatory sentences we are expressing a very sh uh, sharp emotion something which is very uh, much full of feelings and therefore we put an exclamation mark to it and because we are uh, expressing our feelings with an exclamation mark in the sentence these becomes exclamatory sentence so a sentence that expresses strong feeling and it should end with an exclamation mark these are the four basic kinds of sentences that we use in our day to day life whether we are speaking or we are writing any of the point of time when we are communicating these are the kinds of sentences which come into picture now uh, kinds of sentences let us look at it in different league how a statement or a sentence becomes you know very glaring becomes very uh, important becomes very emphatic in nature think different this is the uh, sign board of, uh, of apple uh, and uh, um, this is not known by people normally but this is their tagline and it has some kind of command in itself it is saying people to think different so it there is nothing said as you think different or i think different it is just think different and we start thinking that yes it is for me so somebody is telling me you think different that means somebody is commanding me to think different and therefore it's an imperative statement then this is a poetry uh, by william blake the tiger what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry now this if you look at it Uh, there is a question mark and the whole poem is written in an interrogative form if you read the poem you will realize that the poet has used only interrogative statement with figures of speech and uh, made the poem so beautiful it has made the poem so uh, emphatic in nature so important then um, robert frost a declarative statement but i have promises to keep and miles to go before i sleep uh, this is a very beautiful poem and it talks about how the poet is thinking about future is futuristic and how the po poetry uh, talks about commitment the poet is talking about his commitment to uh, various things in his life various people and uh, uh, various kinds of work that he has to do very motivating poetry but the statement over there you will find in the whole poem again is more of declarative kind so he is declaring something then exclamatory this is from the solitary reaper by william wordsworth behold her single in the field yon solitary highland lass the poet is so filled with the uh enchantment and uh, is so happy to see somebody who is so beautiful somebody who is uh, so different from the normal and uh, somebody who is managing things alone such a strong uh, woman and uh, therefore he cannot keep his reaction his emotions in himself and 
this is how it comes out with an exclamation mark and it becomes exclamatory sentence okay let us understand the sentence structure so sentence structure should be having subject and predicate clause and phrase it helps us to read and write English sentence structure is the basic arrangement of words in a sentence and these words would be as we have already read in parts of speech, already understood in parts of speech that we have in the form of subject, we have nouns, in the form of uh, action, uh, we have verbs and there are other things like adjectives and adverbs and pronouns which are either used for noun or to glorify noun or to glorify verb. So every sentence will be including a subject and a predicate. It may include more subjects and more predicate, but definitely a full sentence should have a structure of a subject and a predicate. And this is how we can say the formula of a sentence is formed, where we have a subject which is a noun or a pronoun plus predicate which would be verb plus object which is optional not necessary always that you may have a object okay now look at these all sentences are about something or someone if we look at english language we will find that it is always uh, that the sentence or the statements that are written are in the context of an object or a human being or a place so that means there is a noun involved if you look at it, what are these? We can say these are uh, nouns, basically a person, place, thing or an idea. And therefore, these are called as subject in English language. Apart from noun, we also call it as subject. Then, what are subject now? See the statement. Jaya often comes late to class. On Saturdays, I never get up before 9 o'clock. Lying on the sofa watching old films is my favorite hobby. Now over here, if you look at the red highlighted words, there is something or someone that the sentence is about. And this is called the subject. So in the first case, Jaya becomes the subject. Uh, second statement, I become the subject. And the third one, this whole thing is the subject, lying on the sofa, watching old films. That means this is me, this whole, these whole words together are defining one person. Okay. Now, subject is often, but not always the first thing in the sentence that we can always uh, get from this. So here in the sentence, if you see the first word is subject, but in the second one, it is not the first word, rather it is the third word that becomes the subject. And then there are a group of words also which are subject over here. Subject can be one or more nouns or pronouns and sometimes also supporting adjectives. Now, look at the statement again in different form. The color has also changed. So, Jaya often comes late to class. On Saturdays, I never get up before 9 o'clock and lying on the sofa watching old films is my favorite hobby. Now, if the first part that was highlighted in the earlier slide was subject, then obviously we have understood that this would be the predicate. So the ones in greens are the predicate. Now, what is a predicate? One is that the predicate will contain the information about that subject, whether that subject is a living thing or a non-living thing. Then the position of predicate, it should always come after the subject. Sometimes it comes before, but still it is a predicate because it is uh, talking about uh, a subject. Then after subject, the rest of the sentence will be predicate, which can be a verb or verbs and combination of verbs, other nouns, adjectives or adverb, which we call as objects. So verb 
and then any other subject any other noun any other uh, pronoun which looks like a subject but is coming after the verb becomes an object so the whole thing that is the verb and the later words that continue with the verb would be called as predicate now some points that we can note about the predicate is the predicate can include direct or indirect objects over here you see the boy hit the ball now over here we see that ball is a direct object the boy is the subject hit the ball hit will be your uh, verb and the ball becomes the predicate which is a direct object the boy gave me the ball now over here me becomes an indirect object so this is how we see that the predicate is used the boy gave me the ball so this whole thing is indirect object then indirect objects always precede the direct objects so they will always go before the direct object ball was a direct object and me comes before the ball okay each sentence in english needs a subject and a verb very important any complete sentence would have a subject and a verb the subject and verb need to agree with each other so verb in agreement if the third person singular subject must have the third person singular verb and a plural subject needs to have a plural verb over here i am american you are a student so i am you are singular singular plural plural he is tired we like fruit therefore what is the sentence structure we see noun and verb subject and predicate so birds sing again subject the little birds it is adjective plus noun the little birds were singing happily in the tree tops this whole thing becomes predicate and it includes what verb plus object again some birds object adjective plus noun but this is a subject are beautiful so verb plus object this is a predicate now let us move on to the next statements in the tree tops to the store before dark for the test tomorrow after the meal if you look at this do you think the sentence starts with some capital word capital alphabet no so these are incomplete in itself now these are called as phrases what is what are phrases a phrase is a group of words that give the information in the tree tops there is some information which may make sense but does not give a complete sense and therefore it is not a complete sentence or a complete clause that means it does not have either a subject or a predicate and uh, it will not include both it is either one of it that you find in a phrase so now read burn a hole in my pocket burn the midnight oil ahead of time these are all phrases okay apple of my eye around the clock bad egg better late than never what do we see in these phrases we find that it, the phrases could have only two words or it can have more than two words so that means a phrase even if it is not a complete sentence doesn't mean that it has to always be a shorter one or something which has only two or three words in it it could have more than three four words but still if it is an incomplete sentence or it does not have subject and predicate together or it is not giving complete information we will call it as a phrase now observe these two statements the boy wants something and the boy wants to go home these things are underlined something and to go home is there a difference that you can see 
yes think about it the boy wants and in the second one also the boy wants but in the first one the boy wants something in the second one the boy wants to go home okay i love comics i love reading comics now this is over here if we see the boy wants something or i love comics the underlined words are noun they are just noun whereas when we add when we are adding some more words to it the boy wants to go home i love reading comics there are more words added and they are talking about a noun who wants to go home who loves reading comics a question could be formed and therefore we can call it as noun phrase because the question is about a noun who okay then to air is human the nice neighbor a soft comfortable bed these are noun phrases how it consists of a noun and its modifier right so noun phrase has a noun that is human and the modifiers the rest of the words neighbor nice neighbor bed soft and comfortable to air is human usually assembled centering a single noun and works as a subject or an object or a complement in the sentence so these noun phrases will have a single noun which may work as a subject or an object now we look at it i like to swing the bat hard when i am at the crease over here to swing the bat is an object and what do i like to do okay who likes to swing the bat then reading novels is a good habit over here the noun phrase is in the form of a subject the probability of happening of that match is not much again that match of that match probability of what of that match so this becomes a subject we are sorry for her departure v is already a subject here and therefore her departure would be an object and still it would be a noun phrase why because it is incomplete if we look at it her departure is an incomplete we are sorry is a complete statement for her departure is an incomplete statement okay we waiting for the movie felt a prick on his arm and why we are saying it as verb phrase earlier we saw that we uh, call a phrase a noun phrase because it is questioning about a noun or a subject or an object here what is it we are waiting for the movie we are doing what there is a, a verb that starts the phrase and therefore it becomes a verb phrase felt a prick felt is also a verb running on the wet floor again the statement is starting with a verb and she slipped and broke her arm so how did she slip and break her arm by running on the wet floor so a verb is involved which gives us the answer okay fill up the gas tank to help it run better now fill up the gas tank is complete in itself but if we remove it from the second part of it to help it run better still fill up the gas tank is a complete one whereas to help it run better is an incomplete statement and therefore it's a phrase now it is a verb phrase why because the focus is on helping why do we want to fill up the gas tank so that it can help it to run better so verb phrases consists of the verb and its modifiers the modifiers could be uh, adverbs most of the times or it could also be adjectives and other nouns okay next type of phrase a house built of stone 
almira made of steel adjective phrase why because it is talking about the quality of a noun a house built of stone what kind of house a house built of stone and why it is phrase because again the house built of stone and then there is no other meaning to it what uh, why is this statement put up so the incomplete information is given a house built of stone where we live then we could say that the statement is complete but here it is incomplete and therefore it is an adjective phrase almira made of steel again there is the quality that is given about uh, the noun so an adjective phrase comprises of an adjective and it works as a single adjective in the sentence these are so many examples of it alex is a well behaved man so well behaved man would be an adjective phrase he is a man of friendly nature what kind of friendly nature julie is a woman of gorgeous style what kind of woman so of gorgeous style and likewise she leads a very interesting life what kind of life she leads it is about she so therefore it is adjective and it is talking about the quality the phrase itself is talking about the quality and therefore it is adjective phrase a lot of people do not sleep at night this is uh, adjective of quantity how many people do not sleep a lot of people do not sleep then around the block modifying where after the meal modifying when in silence is modifying how so when i say around the block where we are asking a question where will you meet where will you come so i will come around the block after the meal when will you meet after the meal uh, in silence how will you meet in silence such kind of uh, phrases which are talking something in terms of uh, action or verb we could say are adverbial phrase because adverbs are the ones that will either modify a verb or it may also modify an adjective okay so adverbial phrase uh, will modify a verb or an adjective adjective is basically something which is qualifying a noun so a noun is involved there and it works as an adverb in the sentence adverbial phrase around the block it becomes an adverb in the sentence okay some examples the horse runs at a good speed how does the horse run so it is about the running of the horse i was in a hurry then in what kind of condition i was how i was i was in a hurry i ran as fast as possible how fast did i run i ran as fast as possible he works very slowly how does he work he works very slowly so all the statements will have a question which is asking about the action or the adjective of the uh, statement that is mentioned there and since it is qualifying the verb or the adjective it becomes an adverbial phrase okay what is the difference between adjective and adverb phrase adjective phrase have you heard of the man in the moon adverb phrase how could a man be in the moon just see the difference in the moon is adjective phrase in the moon in second one is adverb phrase but there is a difference the crowd in the bazaar was very no noisy the crowd halted in the bazaar again phrase is same in the bazaar in both the statements but still one is adjective and the other is adverb so can you guess can you see what it is can you ask any questions to find out adjective phrase will be modifying the noun or the adjective adverb phrase will be modifying the verb or the adjective so we can only tell the type of phrase once we examine their function in a sentence so let us examine have you heard of the man 
in the moon so over here the focus is on have you heard of the man whereas in the adverb phrase we can see how could a man be in the moon how could somebody be or stay the focus is on how and staying which is an action so how this action could be performed and therefore it is adverb similarly second one the crowd in the bazaar was noisy over here we are talking about the crowd and the crowd is a uh, verb is a noun sorry and therefore uh, in the bazaar is qualifying the crowd or the noun and it is adjective phrase whereas the crowd halted in the bazaar where did the crowd halt so halt is what uh, is being uh, qualified over here and therefore it is adverb phrase now again notice that in adjective phrase the adjective phrase would come after the noun or after the pronoun or the subject whereas in adverb phrase it will come after the verb so be is the verb over here could be and then the adverb phrase halted is the verb over here and then the adverb phrase so we have to look at the function and the position of the phrase to determine whether it is an adjective phrase or an adverb phrase next prepositional phrase a group of words beginning with a preposition we have already understood what a preposition is preposition that means something that talks about the position of the noun it may include a noun or a pronoun with supporting adjectives etc prepositional phrases include all the other type of phrase that means it could be a part of noun phrase or verb phrase or whatever phrases that we saw earlier see he sacrificed his life for the sake of his country for is a preposition and this phrase starts with that and therefore it becomes prepositional phrase it is talking about the life of somebody and so it is preposition uh, over here life of somebody in his country he sacrificed his life for the country in the end we all have to die again in is a preposition since it is starting with in therefore the first few words become the phrase over here so the sentence starts with a phrase prepositional phrase and then again it is talking about the position of this we he is on the way so uh, on is a preposition and therefore if this is a prepositional phrase by working aimlessly you will not get success again by is a preposition and this phrase starts with that therefore it becomes prepositional phrase same goes for the last one in spite of working hard he was insulted in spite of is a preposition and therefore it is a prepositional phrase phrase and it is talking about him so we're talking about a noun conjunctional phrase a conjunctional phrase works as a conjunction how we saw in the preposition it it is working as a preposition in the prepositional phrase similarly in the conjunctional phrase it will work as a conjunction as soon as you got in he went out as soon as is a conjunction because this is uh, if uh, you look at the function of a conjunction it is joining the statement or the word to give it a meaning and that is what we look in this uh, statements we have to work hard so that we can win the next match what is joining so that and since it is a phrase it is not a more than one word it becomes a phrase and therefore it is conjunctional phrase i will attend the ceremony provided that you come that is a conjunction and these both together form the conjunctional phrase john started working early in order that he could finish early in order that is something which is joining john started working early he could finish early these two statements and therefore in order that is a conjunctional phrase now interjectional phrase so from interjections we get interjectional phrase and you if you try to remember what are interjections they talk about our feelings and Uh, we need to put exclamation mark 
uh, when we are using interjections so interjections will also have more than one word and then it becomes interjectional phrase it should have an exclamation mark near the interjection so what a pity he is dead very simple this is wherever we find the exclamation mark the uh, phrase or those group of words together over there become interjectional phrase what a pleasure i won the first prize again there is an exclamation mark here and therefore the words before the exclamation mark together form the interjectional phrase oh please don't say that again so don't say that again is separate oh please is separate because of exclamation it is an interjection and because there are two words together we call it as interjectional phrase so these are the types of phrases that we saw today noun phrase adjective phrase adverbial phrase verb phrase prepositional phrase conjunctional phrase and interjectional phrase now let's let us look at uh, something beyond the phrase when the moon shone he lurked in the shadows he picked up the ball kept on the ground the sun rises in the east and sets in the west we can call these statements as clause what is the speciality of this statement to call them as clause clause is the sentence is another word or term for a sentence and what is a sentence a sentence is something that has subject and predicate therefore a clause will have a subject and a predicate or rather will have subjects and predicate so when we analyze it we see when the moon shone he lurked in the shadows we can find the subjects and predicate so a clause is a group of words that includes a subject and predicate a clause function as an adjective an adverb or a noun that means we can have either adjective clause adverb clause or noun clause okay she is hungry i am feeling well today i like ice cream now we find that clauses also have independent types independent clause or main clause or principal clause and the other form would be just the opposite that is dependent so what is independent clause where we have subject and verb and a complete thought is presented she is hungry i am feeling well today so the whole statement is complete in itself so it is a simple statement it can stand on its own and every sentence must have at least one main clause okay next although she is hungry whoever is hungry because i am feeling well if you come with me but something is missing there and therefore such statements would be called as dependent or subordinate clause that means they require the help of something else and therefore subordinate conjunction plus subject plus verb would be an incomplete thought and it would be called as dependent clause subordinate conjunction for example although she subject is hungry verb together they give an incomplete thought there are four words but still the thought is incomplete and therefore it is a dependent clause the rest you can uh, yourself read and see how the formula goes so a dependent clause will not be able to stand on its own it needs an independent clause to complete a sentence and it will often begin with words such as although since if when and because which we call as conjunctions or subordinate conjunction to be precise so it does not have a subject and a predicate it will have either of the one what is the difference between the two then so examples will tell you the difference dependent although she is hungry independent she will give him some of her food so over here it is a complete sentence over here it is incomplete same goes for the second example whatever they decide but something is missing and therefore dependent i will agree to is a small statement but still an independent so a hierarchy of word units if we look at phrases and clauses the difference is that the phrase will not contain subject uh, 
and uh, uh, subject will not be completing an action so predicate somewhere is incomplete when a group of words which will contain the subject doing an action it will become a clause because subject predi predicate together will make it a clause phrases can be added to sentences to make them more complex after the meal will be a phrase that mom prepared will be a clause after the meal that mom prepared i felt full this would be a sentence so the mixture of phrase and clause or dependent and independent clause makes a complete statement so this is what we learned today sentences kinds of sentences their structure phrases and clauses the types of phrases so thank you and have a great day